Hey everybody and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build the iron golem farm that sits on top of the one chunk farming complex. Now I designed the one chunk farming complex to work because, well because it's in one chunk really. If you get more than, depending on the render distance of your server, uh, if you get more than four or five chunks away from a farm, then it stops working. And it's the same with iron golem farms as well. If you, Unless you build them in spawn chunks, uh, which unless you're on your own server is or your own uh, single player world it's it's uh, it's unlikely that you'll be able to uh, if you don't build it in a spawn chunk it won't work when the chunk is unloaded uh, and if you get more than four or five chunk uh, chunks away from the farms they'll stop working and as i say it's the same for iron golem farms so the beauty of this one chunk farming complex is that as long as you're within five chunks of this then all of the farms are going to continually work and produce food for you and also now produce iron. Now the farm itself is a, is a two floor design it's got two spawning floors which maximizes the amount of of spawn space as possible. Uh, you probably know and if you don't I'll tell you anyway uh, iron golems will spawn inside a village that's got at least 10 villagers and at least 24 doors and it'll spawn in an area centered on the center of that village in an area of 16 by 16 by 6 so with this design having two spawning floors and the doors in the in this particular configuration it allows the iron golems to spawn on either floor and once they spawn they'll fall down the middle and land on those lava blades and uh, and you'll get all the iron golemy goodness now, golems spawn on average every 7,000 game ticks. On average, about every six minutes that works out to. Uh, and I'll explain this later on in the video, in the tutorial. Uh, but this farm with 20 villagers gets you about 70 ingots of iron every hour. So it's not super efficient. It's not an iron titan. It's not going to have golems raining down on you. But it is going to give you a steady supply and as long as the chunk is loaded as long as i say you, you're within four or five chunks of the farm it's going to work and uh, you're going to get you know you're going to get a stack of of, of iron ingots every hour which you, which is probably better than you'd be able to mine so it's not too bad at all now a couple of prerequisites for this you have to build this at least 64 blocks away from any other village or valid door or village of breeder otherwise it's going to interfere with it and it's going to break it so as i say you have to you have to build this 64 blocks away from any other doors in any direction x y and z and you also have to build it at least 64 blocks above any of your farms that have villages in them and it's, it's vital that you do this, and I will bang on about this quite a lot because it's very important that you do. If you build that lower, closer to this village than 64 blocks, these guys are going to run like run around like headless chickens. They're not going to farm. You're going to get no work out of them, and it's just going to it's going to break your farm. So find out what level your top floor is, and don't build the iron golem farm on the top until you've finished building all of your farms with villages in. Does it matter about these farms, sugarcane and the pumpkin and melon? They'll work within 64 blocks. But farms with villagers won't. So build all of your villager farms first, and then your pumpkin and melon farms and your sugarcane farms on top of that. And finally, build your iron golem farm right at the very top. And as long as you're within five, five chunks, it's going to work. And you're going to get iron shot down the middle of your farm. And then shot out of here off to your storage system so i'll put a screenshot of everything you're going to need to build this bad boy on screen now pause the video if you need to and then we'll crack on with building it okay so to start with you need to find the center of your one chunk farm and once you've found the center of it you need to pop the block out there now you need to put a dropper, put yourself a block, uh, put yourself a block there. You need to put a dropper facing down on that block. And now in creative, it's quite easy. 
in survival it's going to be a little bit more difficult but you need to put a block there facing down and then you can fill the hole back in again okay so now what we need to do is put down the redstone to power the hopper when there's something in it so for that you're going to need a comparator coming out of the left hand side and then a repeater and then a normal block, a solid block, then some redstone looping back round into the comparator and on the other side you need some redstone there and there and then a repeater into that block there. So now every time something goes into that hopper it fires and gets spat out. Brilliant. Okay now we've done that we need to put down some hoppers. So you need to grab yourself nine hoppers and you want to put the first one, you need to crouch for this, you need to crouch and put it directly on top of the dropper. So it's like that. And then the others, the other eight, need to lead into that hopper. So if you go to every corner, crouching, every side, sorry, and put the hopper leading into the centre hopper. So as you can see now, all the nozzles are pointing towards the centre. And then the, the, the remaining four just need to be either pointing at that hopper or that hopper. It doesn't make a difference. It makes no difference whatsoever. But ultimately, anything that lands in these hoppers needs to find its way to the dropper in the centre. And then you've got that. Okay, now grab yourself some solid blocks and you need to put a ring of solid blocks all the way around the side of these hoppers. Okay, like that. And then, uh, then we can fill in the fill in around the bottom. So if we fill these areas in now, before we completely fill it in, though, don't forget to throw in a a torch or a couple of torches. Never have too much light when you get around flashing redstone. If we stick one there and one there, that should be more than adequate. Actually, you can't put one there, can you? Just put one there. That will be fine. And then solid blocks. In the remaining gaps like that okay so now we need to make the killing mechanism the the, the lava blades that is going to that are going to kill the golems when they fall down uh, and to do that you need to put down we need we're going to put lava blades on either side so we're going to have a lava blade on that side we're going to have a lava blade on that side and it's going to kill the guys in the middle so on the left hand side you want to put down six blocks like that and on the right hand side you need to put down six blocks like that build at the front as well those two there and these two at the back and then in these gaps here you want to stick in some glass just for looks really you can use solid blocks if you want to but i'm going to use glass And then on the front like that. Now on either side, on the left hand side, that's the left, that's the right. On the left hand side, you're going to need some signs. So you need to put three signs. You need to put three signs here. One there, one there, and then one there. And then you want to whiz around the other side, do exactly the same on this side. Three signs there, there, and there. Okay. That's what we currently have. Now what we need to do is pick a side. We'll choose this side. And then you need to fill in a floor that is four blocks deep. So it's what? Five blocks wide. One, two, three, four, five blocks wide. It needs to come this way four blocks. So, sorry. Yeah, four blocks. One, two, three like that and then you need to put 
a surround around those blocks like this. And now your lava is going to sit in there. Okay, so we do the same on this side. Five, that's three. One, two, three, four, five, four. And then a border around the side of the of the floor you've just put down. So we've got lava goes in there, we've got lava goes in there. So if we grab six buckets of lava, you might get away with four buckets of lava. Let's try four. Just to save you a bit of lava. And put one in each corner. One there, one there. One there, one there. Is that going to be enough? It will, but it doesn't look great, does it? So you are going to need six. If you've only got four, that will work. If you can get yourself six, stick one down in the middle. And that's just going to look better. So now you've got your lava blades coming down on either side. So now anything that falls down the middle, any poor golem that falls down the middle, is going to die. Ah, unfortunately. And then we need to cover all of this, all of the lava, with solid blocks. Because you don't want to be falling in that. Now it's full of lava now, do you? And you want to do the same on this side. Now you need to just put another layer of glass in the front and the back and then you want to top it off with another layer of solid blocks so you're left with that now what you need to do is just fill in around the sides here so lob down another torch which I'm sure you've got in your in your uh, hot bar and I haven't and on this side and then just fill in all of this with solid blocks. And then do the same on the other side. So that's the killing chamber. Now anything that falls, uh, any golems that fall down now are going to land there and die. What I forgot to mention, and what would be a good idea, is if you were to put carpet on top of these hoppers, which we'll do. We'll grab ourselves some carpet. What colour do you reckon? We'll have a fancy yellow today. So grab yourself some yellow carpet, or any carpet. It doesn't, doesn't have to be yellow. Yellow just happens to be my favorite color and then put yourself your glass back in again and now as I say anything that falls on there is going to land on the uh, on the hoppers it's, all the stuff is then going to fall down into the hopper which is then going to go into the dropper which is then going to be fired out into the melon farm then it's going to make its way all the way down and uh, into your storage unit at the bottom Now what we need to do is grab yourself some glass. We need to make a column of glass that goes all the way up to the uh, to the floor, to the main floor of the Iron Golem farm. But the main floor of the Iron Golem farm has got to be, and it's very, very important, the main floor has got to be 64 blocks above the level of your highest farm that has villagers in it. Okay, it doesn't matter if, you, if you've got... Uh, sugarcane or beetroot farms uh, sorry sugarcane or melon and pumpkin farms above it they're fine they'll work within 64 blocks but anything with a villager in it any farm with a villager in it cannot be within 64 blocks of your iron golem farm if it is these guys will stop working and worse than that they could stop breeding and then you'll have babies running about everywhere so your iron golem farm cannot start unless it's 64 blocks above this level. So you need to find out what level your highest 
villager farm is on. And my highest villager farm here is on level 27. So my iron golem farm cannot start until I'm on level 93. So what we need to do then is go up here and we're going to build a going to build a tube, a column of uh, of glass all the way up to where the farm starts. And we need to build it up to level, we'll call it level 94, just to be on the safe side. So we'll go up to level 94. So pick a corner, we'll choose this corner, and then build up until you get to level 94, or whichever level it is that's 64 blocks above your top villager farm. So there you go. Now I'm on level 94. So I can start my I can stop my iron golem farm here. So if we replace this top block with a solid block and then just build a sort of a ring around the tube. like that so now you've got that now what you need to do is stand in the middle of one of the sides doesn't matter which one anyone will we'll choose this one and then you need to count eight blocks outwards so we've got one two three four get rid of the f3 screen five six seven eight Okay, then you go over to the next one, next side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you do this on all four sides. So now you're left with that. Now what you need to do is fill all of this in. Obviously, to fill it in in uh, in, uh, in survival, you just have to crouch off the edge and then be very careful to fill it all in. Obviously, in creative, it's a little bit easier. So completely fill all this floor in. Okay, so now you're left with that. Now stick yourself down a, a temporary block on the corner there, on one corner. Grab yourself some slabs. We're using quartz slabs. And then you want to put a slab there. So it's a bottom slab. And then you want to completely surround this platform with slabs. This is going to this is going to stop water from flowing off the side. Okay, then still using the slabs, put two slabs on top of the corner block and then one on either side, like that. And do the same on all four corners. One, two, and one either side. One, two, one either side. One, two, one either side. Now, on two of these corners, you are going to have to pop these out uh, in a little while to put the villagers in. But we'll do that in a second. But I just find it easy to do all of this in one go. So now you should be left with, let's get to the front. Now you should be left with something that looks a little bit like that. OK, now we need to put in the, the pods for the villagers to, to get the villagers into. So go to one of the corners, doesn't matter which one. We'll go to the back left one. We'll use the back left and the front right. They need to be opposite corners. The villagers have to go in opposite corners. Um, so it doesn't matter which corners you choose as long as they're opposing corners. And then get yourself underneath. 
and you want to put some slabs like this. You want to put a slab there, 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 there like that. So you've got, you've got like a, a four by, sorry, a, a three by three area. And then you can pop out those slabs there and that, that slab there, that block there is going to be the area where your villagers are going to be standing. So then just extend these slabs around like that. And that's the area where your villagers are going to be standing right in there. Okay, so opposite side, underneath. So you want to put, you want to put a slab there, slab there, and fill it in. So again, three by three. Pop out those slabs, and then fill the rest in with slabs like that. And again, that's where that's where your villages are going to sit. OK, now we need to put on the platforms for the doors. So you want to take your, get yourself over to one of the villager pods. And then put another slab on top of that block there and then count out five slabs. One, two, three, four, five. OK, like that. So round to the other side, another slab on there, making that a solid block. And then two, two, three, four, five. So now you've got six six blocks there one two three four five six one two three four five six grab yourself some wooden doors and then throw some wooden doors down on top of them like that and off to the other side do exactly the same thing Slab on top and then five more slabs. One, two, three, four, five. Round to here. Slab on top. One, two, three, four, five. And then doors on top of that. Okay. So currently that's what you should have. Now you want to get a bit of light to these doors because zombies can spawn on these levels here so really you need a bit of light on there and the easiest way to do that is to stick down another slab on either end of these doors and put a torch on it if you want to use glowstone here or uh, sea lanterns you can do uh, but it's just easier or I find it easier just to throw a torch down And then if you stand on this block and press F3, you can see that the, the light for the block, top left hand corner, says 15 to the sky, which is obviously the sun, because there's nothing blocking my sky axis. So I've got 15 light on the block from the sky. But the, the, uh, the light for the block from other light sources, i.e. that, is currently what, 12 and then 11, 10, 9, 8. So it doesn't get any darker than eight on these blocks, which is great because mobs only spawn lie level seven or below. So that way we don't have to worry about zombies spawning on here, jumping in and starting to eat our villagers. OK, so now it's time to start building the second level. OK, for the second level, you need to grab yourself some slabs again. And you want to put some slabs down directly above the doors. Like that. And then you want to build a perimeter all the way around directly above the perimeter you made with the slabs on the first level. OK, like that. And then you need to you need to put the main floor down, the main second floor. And you need to do that if you crouch and put a block 
aim at that door and put a block at the top of the door, it appears exactly in the right place. Okay, so to so crouch, aim at the top of the door, put down a slab, and you put a slab down in, in the right position where you need it, and then you need to fill in all of the floor with slabs. Okay, so once you've filled all that in, remember to leave the 3x3 three three gap in the middle. Otherwise, your, your golems aren't going to be able to fall down. Now we need to go to the corners again. And this is where we put the, the little column in that's going to hold the water. So get your slab. Two slabs and a slab either side of it. Same as you did down the bottom. One, two, and then a slab either side. One, two... Slab either side. One, two, slab either side. Now, because we've used slabs at the top, we haven't got to worry about lighting up here. Because we can't put lighting on these slabs, on the, the bottom slabs, uh, and therefore... No mobs are going to be able to spawn on them anyway. So we haven't got to worry about lighting up here. So now, if you've followed the instructions, we should have two floors, two spawning floors. We should have the doors in. We should have the pods for the villagers. Now we need to put in some water. So grab yourself some water. Now you could use ice. I mean, I, I've always found it easier. If I'm doing a lot of work with water, I've always found it easy to carry ice about with me because you can't stack water buckets, but you can stack ice. And then it's just a case of putting some ice down the sides and then breaking them to make them melt. But we, we're in creative, so we can use water buckets. If you've got an infinite water source nearby, then great. If you haven't, then I suggest you make one up here Otherwise, you're going to be running backwards and forwards trying to get uh, water. So make yourself an infinite water source. And they're easy to make. Do that. Grab yourself two buckets of water. Boom, boom, and you've got yourself a temporary infinite water source. Uh, and once it's done, we'll just get rid of it. So grab yourself some water. And then you need to pick a side, any side. Count two blocks in, and it's important that you do count two blocks in. If you don't, if you put water in the corner, all you're going to do is completely fill this with uh, with uh, water source blocks. And it'll it's just going to ruin everything. So make sure you leave those two first two blocks water free just for now so you miss that one miss that one and then you need to put down water on all of the others apart from the two at this side remember one two leave them and then put down water and you do that on every side so miss the first two and then water on every other block leaving those two leave those two and then water Leaving those two, and then last side. Now, as I say, if I were to put a water source block there, all that's going to do is completely fill this up with water source blocks, and it'll completely break it. So don't do it. Now what you need to do is put water on this block here. That one there. And that's going to force everything else now into the center. OK, so don't put it at the bottom. You want to put it on that block there. Very important that you don't put it at the bottom. 
put it the next one up, put it there. Okay, not at the bottom, there. And then you're left with that. So now anything that appears in that form, any golem, I should say, is going to fall straight down the center of the form. Straight down there. And now we need to do the same on the bottom floor. So, miss two, and then water source, but water blocks on every other block. And then leave the two at the end, like that. Miss two. Water. Missing two at the end. Miss two, and then water. If you, if you put water source blocks at the end there and completely fill this with, uh, with water source blocks, it's going to rain down there. It's going to break your lava. It's going to. It's just an absolute pain. So really, please be very careful. Miss those two blocks, and then put water on those. Miss the two blocks. Put water on those. Do not put water on those t the, the corner blocks there. And then put some more water in each corner. Okay. Now we can get rid of this. As we have no further use for it. So now we're nearly there. We're nearly set up. Two things we need left to do. We need to build the uh, the center column up. Grab yourself some glass or whatever it is that you want to use. Okay, so once you put the shoot in, that's what it looks like. It's now time to get the villagers in. Now you need to get the villagers into the in, into here, into these corners, and it's it's I won't lie, it's not going to be easy getting them in there. Now probably the easiest way to do it would be via a water elevator. Uh, so you'll need to build yourself. Let's grab some blocks, and we'll see if we can just build a quick one. You'll need to build yourself a water elevator coming all the way from wherever you're village of breeder is obviously this is not a complete one but it, it just give you an idea And then you need to pop out these corner blocks. We can put those back in again in a second and just fill in these blocks here. And then just stick a couple of temporary blocks there and there. You might want to pop out that door just to put a block there. What you don't want is villagers landing on this block and running off. Okay. So now grab yourself a sign. Otherwise you're going to drown them. Put your sign just there. And then you can put yourself down. Uh, water source blocks all the way up to the top obviously leaving a gap in there for the signs for the air spaces otherwise you're going to drown them but they need to be solid blocks solid water source blocks so you need one there one there and then once you get to the top it'll flow forwards and then they'll fall happily into there and then all you need to do then is get yourself some villagers to come up your water chute
And then hopefully you can start getting some villagers coming up here. Brilliant. So once you've got the villagers in, you'll need 10 in each pod. For reasons I'll explain in a second. So once you've got the villagers in there, you can then get rid of all these temporary blocks, put your door back. And then get rid of all of this. And unfortunately, go around the other side. If you wanted to, there is no reason why you can't just run a chute all the way around the side of your uh, side of the top of the villager farm sorry of the iron golem farm uh, leading all the way to the other side and then doing the same over here getting them to fall past these blocks and into the into that hole or just build yourself another water chute coming all the way up to the top entirely up to you And then just pop back in the blocks that you've taken out. Now you need to do this, as I say, you need to do the same on the opposite side. I'm just going to throw some villagers in this side. Okay, so that's it. That's the uh, that's a, the Iron Golem farm built. Uh, now, because we've put 20 villagers in there, uh, it would, the village will support two golems. Now, this doesn't mean that they're going to spawn any quicker, but what it does mean is because, because of the algorithm used by Minecraft to calculate whether or not an Iron Golem can spawn inside the village, if there's less than 20 villagers in there, there can only ever be one iron golem farm in the village. So if there's an iron golem spawned and it's making its way to the middle, Minecraft won't try to spawn another one. Whereas if you've got 20 or more villagers in the iron farm, if there's an iron golem in there, then Minecraft will start calculating trying to find the random number in order to generate another iron golem and in, it's it's not a massive difference but in testing with less than 20 villagers in the farm it averaged about 60 iron ingots an hour which is which is average i mean sometimes it was more sometimes it was less but it it averaged at about 60 an hour. With 20 villagers in there, it averaged 70 an hour. So it's slightly more efficient with 20 villagers in there. If you haven't got 20 villagers, you've only got 10 villagers. It needs at least 10 in here. And it needs at least one villager on one side. So you can't have all 10 villagers in one side. Because if you do, then these doors won't be recognised. So you can either have nine in one side and one in the other or five on five or or six and four. But you do need villagers in either pod. Uh, so at least 10 villagers. If you want it to be a little bit more efficient, have 20 villagers, have 10 in each pod. And that should produce you about 70 iron ingots an hour. So that's how you make the Iron Golem farm for the One Chunk farming system. I hope you've enjoyed the video, everybody. If you have, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you've really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials. This is Frilliar, and I'm out of here.